Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today, we'll be taking a look at all 50 of the rides and attractions found at the Universal Orlando Resort for 2023, which includes Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure. Let's begin with my favorite of the two parks, Universal's Islands of Adventure. You enter the park into the Port of Entry Island, which along with guest services is also comprised of many dining and shopping locations. You'll also be able to find the recognizable Pharaoh's Lighthouse that each night helps to guide visitors to the exit of the park. As with all my guides, I'll be heading clockwise around the park, which takes us to the next area, Marvel Superhero Island. Based on the comic book versions of the characters, you can enjoy this amazing island and its four awesome attractions. First up is the Incredible Hulk Coaster. This is probably the most recognizable ride in the park due to its size and distinctive green track. This huge launched roller coaster will see General Ross perform gamma radiation experiments on subjects to try and transform them into Hulk-like creatures, which creates a lot of energy. The coaster features seven inversions and went through a hefty refurbishment in 2016 that included new tracks and a complete new storyline. This is an incredible ride packed with thrills and is still one of my favorite coasters of all time. Next up is Storm Force Accelotron, a teacup ride where you team up with Storm, the weather controlling member of the X-Men and Professor X as you take on their arc enemy Magneto. The faster you spin, the more energy you can create to defeat the evil mastermind. We now move on to the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, which is still my favorite ride in the whole of the Universal Orlando Resort. This dark ride has a great mixture of 3D screens, practical sets and effects, as well as a really fun and exciting storyline featuring lots of Spider-Man villains. The same ride system has gone on to be used for Transformers The Ride over in Universal Studios Florida and the newly opened Jurassic World Adventure in Universal Studios Beijing, which just goes to show the popularity of this entertaining ride. It has also won many awards, including Best Dark Ride for 12 years in a row at the Golden Ticket Awards. There is a reason why many people love to ride this attraction, so make sure you join Spider-Man the next time you visit Universal's Islands of Adventure. Close to the exit of this ride, you will get the chance to meet your favorite Marvel hero or villain in a special meet and greet throughout the day. You'll be able to meet Captain America, Doctor Doom, the Green Goblin, some of the X-Men, and of course Spider-Man makes an appearance. Sticking with Doctor Doom, you can test your fears over on Doctor Doom's Fearful. This space shot ride will launch riders up and down the drop tower as Doctor Doom harvests your fear to take over the world. If you're not too scared, you'll be able to see some amazing views of Islands of Adventure and the whole of the Universal Orlando Resort. It's now time to move on to the next island, Toon Lagoon, that features three water-based attractions. The first being Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls, a classic log flume ride based on the Canadian Mountie from the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. The ride system contains three drops, the last and steepest of which is 75 feet. It is a hybrid flume coaster that utilizes steel track to not only shoot guest-filled logs down the final drop, but under the water's surface and over a bunny hill. Of course, you are likely to get soaked, but not as much as our next attraction, Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges. This is a river rafting water ride based on everyone's favorite sailor, Popeye. You will need to help him save olive oil from Bluto while careening through the unpredictable rapid waters. You'll get very wet on this attraction, so I would suggest wearing a rain mac or riding this attraction earlier in the day to give you a chance to dry off in the hot sun. To add insult to injury, the final attraction in Toon Lagoon is Me Ship the Olive, a playground for children themed to Popeye's ship, featuring guest-operated water sprayers that can further soak those riding Popeye and Bluto's bilge wrap barges. Also, throughout the day, in the main section of Toon Lagoon, you can meet a variety of characters, including Betty Boop, Popeye, and Olive Oil. We now go to the newest and smallest area in the park, Skull Island, which features just the one attraction, Skull Island Reign of Kong. This has a fantastically themed queue line where you will meet a shamaness as well as having a chance to check out some of the creatures from the island. 
you will grab some 3D glasses before boarding a huge safari truck as an audio animatronic tour guide takes you to a giant temple to look for the giant ape. The indoor section uses screens either side of the vehicle which gives the illusion of actually being transported to Skull Island, surrounded by all the dinosaurs, huge bugs and of course King Kong himself as they battle it out throughout the attraction. At the end you will meet the huge animatronic of Kong but don't get too close as he may not be in the best of moods. The next island is Jurassic Park where we'll begin with a classic Jurassic Park river adventure. You will go on a boat tour through the herbivore reserve before the boat is knocked off course causing riders to come face to face with multiple carnivores including a t-rex. There is a huge drop at the end of the ride and you will most likely get wet but in the hot Florida sun this is not too much of a problem. Next is Camp Jurassic, a huge play area for younger visitors to explore. They'll have lots of fun with the slides, climbing nets, water cannons and much more. Within Camp Jurassic there is another attraction, Pteranodon Flyers, a suspended roller coaster that flies you around Camp Jurassic at a nice relaxing pace giving you an awesome vantage point of Jurassic Park and other areas of islands of adventure. This is aimed at younger guests so adults can only ride this attraction if they accompany a rider under 56 inches. This attraction can easily get long wait times so you can make use of the virtual line through the Universal app where you can reserve a place and return at a later time. While you wait you might want to check out the Jurassic Park Discovery Center where you can find a restaurant as well as an interactive play area that allows visitors to learn through various activities and mini shows including a small laboratory where guests can watch a baby velociraptor hatch from an egg. Although the land is based on Jurassic Park all the new attractions that have been added over the last few years have Jurassic World theming, but Universal have yet to confirm if this whole island will be rethemed. You can get up close and personal with Owen Grady's Raptor Blue in the Raptor Encounter. This is the perfect opportunity for you to get a photo with a popular dino. The final attraction in Jurassic Park is the newest in Islands of Adventure, the amazing Jurassic World Velocicoaster. This launch roller coaster features two high speed launches, a signature 155 foot tall top hat, four inversions including the beautiful Heartline roll and reaches a maximum speed of 70 miles an hour. This is an exhilarating experience and has quickly become a favourite in the coaster community. Along with being a great coaster it also features perfect theming with the velociraptors being present throughout the queue and ride. This coaster is definitely not for the faint hearted so if you enjoy thrills make sure you ride the Velocicoaster. If you're enjoying the guide so far don't forget to hit the like button as it helps us to share it to more visitors. We now move on to the most popular island in the park the wizarding world of Harry Potter Hogsmeade. Let's start with the first attraction, Hogwarts Express. Not only does this train transport visitors between the two parks, it also includes a unique storyline on both of the journeys. As you head from Hogsmeade to King's Cross Station over in Universal Studios Florida, you'll encounter Centaurs in the Forbidden Forest, the spooky Malfoy Mansion and spot the night bus as it squeezes between buildings when you arrive in London. It is the perfect way to travel between the two parks but you will need a two park ticket to ride this train. The main attraction in the land is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, a motion based dark ride. The queue line is fantastically themed to the hallways and rooms within Hogwarts which feels like an attraction within itself. The ride will explore many different recognisable scenes from the books and films and features a plethora of Harry Potter characters and creatures in a mixture of screens, audio animatronics and special effects. This is a fantastic attraction that always has a long wait time so I would suggest either investing in an express pass or joining the single rider line to bring your wait time down. During construction some of the Lost Continent Island was taken over by the addition of the Wizarding World so some of the attractions have been redesigned or rethemed to fit the Harry Potter theme. The first is the Flight of the Hippogriff which used to be known as the Flying Unicorn. This is a junior outdoor roller coaster where Hagrid will teach visitors how to fly a hippogriff. You will see plenty of theming throughout including Hagrid's hut and the Forbidden Forest as well as some great views of all of the Wizarding World. In 2019, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure opened in Hogsmeade. It was the former location of the old Dueling Dragon roller coasters which were renamed and redesigned to Dragon Challenge in 2010. But it was then closed in 2017 to make way 
for the new coaster. Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure has seven separate launches, which makes it the roller coaster with the most launches in the world. It is also nearly a mile long, making it the longest coaster in Florida. And at a cost of over $300 million, it is one of the most expensive roller coasters ever created. You'll join Hagrid on an adventure with lots of magical creatures on display. You'll see Fluffy, the three-headed dog, some Cornish pixies, a centaur, and many more. This is a must-ride in Islands of Adventure, so make sure you get here early. Hogsmeade also features plenty of shopping and dining locations. You can buy a wand in Ollivander's, chug on some butter beer in the Hog's Head, or try on some robes in Dervish and Bangs. The possibilities are truly endless. Throughout the day, you can watch one of the two shows. Frog Choir is an a cappella performance of some Hogwarts students and their frogs as they sing familiar wizarding songs. And the Triwizard Spirit Rally sees the students of Hogwarts, Boobatons, and Durmstang perform dances to cheer on their classmates. Also, there are three different nighttime projection shows that light up the beautiful Hogwarts Castle throughout the year. The Nighttime Lights at Hogwarts Castle is the main show that celebrates the four houses of Hogwarts, backed by the legendary John Williams musical backdrop. The Dark Arts at Hogwarts Castle sees Voldemort, Death Eaters, and a host of other cruel legions take over the Wizarding School, which begins in the autumn and over Halloween. And then, in the winter months, the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts brings ghosts singing Christmas carols, students building snowmen, and other wintry offerings. Hogsmeade has been a huge success for good reason, and even if you're a casual Harry Potter fan, you can't help but feel the magic in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. The next island is the Lost Continent, which is themed to ancient myths and legends. It is divided into two sections, an ancient Arabian marketplace called Simbad's Bazaar and the Atlantis-themed Lost City. There was also a third section called Merlin Wood with a medieval theme, but the majority of that area was taken when the Wizarding World of Harry Potter was added to the park in 2010. You'll be able to find the Mystic Fountain in Simbad's Bazaar, an interactive attraction that tells jokes and will try to outwit anyone that tries to interact with it. Be careful as it has the power to splash anyone one that it deems unworthy. The only other attraction in the Lost Continent comes in the form of a special effects stage show, Poseidon's Fury. Join Poseidon as he takes on the evil Lord Darkanon with the use of some amazing fire and water effects. Go check out this unique attraction the next time you visit Universal's Islands of Adventure. The Lost Continent is also home to Mythos, which is one of the best restaurants on Universal property. This full-service restaurant offers Mediterranean, Asian, and American cuisine in a beautiful setting and has won many Best Theme Park Restaurant awards. We now head to the final island in the park, Seuss Landing, which is of course based on the works of the popular author, Dr. Seuss. First up is If I Ran the Zoo, an interactive playground inspired by Gerald McGrew's Unusual Zoo. Younger visitors will be able to enjoy discovering all the strange and wonderful animals alongside all the slides, caves, and wet play area. Next is the flagship attraction of this island, the Cat in the Hat. This is a fun dark ride bringing to life the story of the popular book through a mixture of large sets, screens, and audio animatronics. Will the mess created by the cat and the things be cleaned up before mum returns? Find out on this great attraction that is one of the most popular children's rides in the park. Right next to the cat in the hat is the spinning attraction, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, which is based on the book of the same name. You will be able to control your own fish as you try to avoid the water sprays by listening carefully to the onboard riddle. Throughout the day, you'll be able to enjoy the musical show, Oh, the Stories You'll Hear, featuring all your favorite Dr. Seuss characters like the Grinch, the Lorax, Cat in the Hat, and Sam I Am. A storyteller will read one of the popular books as the characters reenact the stories. This is a great show and a nice change of pace from the hustle and bustle of the park. Next is the Caro Seuss Cell, a themed carousel where you'll be able to ride on some of the creatures found in the popular works of Dr. Seuss. The final attraction in Seuss Landing is the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride, which is an elevated monorail that gives a tour around Seuss Landing. There are two ride tracks, one will tell the stories of the Sneetchies, and the other will be more of a compilation of all Dr. Seuss books. This is a great relaxing ride while taking in all the amazing sights and sounds of Seuss Landing. 
The island also features lots of unique dining locations, including the amazing Circus McGurkas restaurant and Green Eggs and Ham Cafe. So that wraps up all the attractions in Islands of Adventure. Let's move on to the original Universal Studios Florida. Once you've made your way through City Walk and to the entrance of Universal Studios Florida, you'll be entering straight into the first section of the park, Production Central. Made to look like a film set, most of the attractions are housed within sound stages. The first attraction you will come to is Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. This is a simulator ride that transforms you into minions before heading on an adventure through many different scenes. The ride includes two pre-shows in Gru's living room and then laboratory, and you will exit through super silly stuff, where you will have a wide selection of Despicable Me merchandise. This attraction used to be home to Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast, and before that, the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera. Opposite Minion Mayhem used to be the popular show Shrek 4D, but this was closed in early 2022 and will be replaced with another Minion based attraction. Stick around until the end of the video to find out some more information about this new ride. The next attraction in Production Central is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, a steel roller coaster featuring a loop and several helixes. This coaster allows its riders to choose from a list of 30 songs to listen to during the ride. You can choose from the likes of the Black Eyed Peas, Beastie Boys and many more. Also, if you hold down on the ride's logo for around 10 seconds, you can access a secret playlist, but you will need to enter a three digit code for a particular song. Here are some of my favorites, but a full list can be found in the link in the description box below. The final attraction in Production Central is Transformers The Ride 3D. You team up with Optimus Prime as you battle against the Decepticons in many exciting show scenes, featuring a variety of effects. You can also meet Megatron, Bumblebee or Optimus Prime in a meet and greet in an area close to the ride building throughout the day. As with all my guides, I'll be heading around the park clockwise, which takes us to the next area, New York. The first attraction you come to is Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. This is a 3D motion simulator ride which replaced Twister Ride It Out. The queue line features displays about the history of The Tonight Show as well as a few interactive games for guests to try before entering the pre-show. There are also regular performances by the Barbershop Quartet, the Ragtime Girls and Hashtag Panda, both of which feature on The Tonight Show as well as making appearances throughout the ride. Once you go through to the main stage area, you will race with Jimmy Fallon while seeing many of the famous landmarks around New York City. As you walk towards the lagoon, you will come to the next attraction, Revenge of the Mummy. This is an indoor roller coaster based on the Mummy franchise. The ride is very meta as you enter the film set of the next Mummy installment. The queue and pre-show features interviews with some of the cast, including Brendan Fraser playing himself. It explains that the curse from the movie is actually real, with Brendan being the only cast member not believing, which has dire consequences later on in the ride. The roller coaster has the ability to move from scene to scene at an incredible pace and features some amazing effects throughout. This ride has recently had some new updates and improvements and it continues to be one of the fan favorite attractions in Universal Studios Florida. Before we move on to the next area, I have to mention the long-running Blues Brothers show that has actually been performing in the New York area since 1991. Make sure you check show times as you enter the park so you don't miss this amazing musical stage show that features many of the hit songs from the classic movie. Also, nearby you can catch the a cappella battle, Sing It, an entertaining show filled with pop hits and great performances. We now move on to the next area, San Francisco, where you can become one of the family on Fast and Furious Supercharged. The pre-show and queue line sees you enter a garage that features many of the franchise's amazing vehicles. You then climb aboard a party bus as this dark ride takes you on an exciting adventure with all the cast from the Fast and Furious movies. Let's hope it doesn't end in a disaster. You can also catch an impromptu performance from the Beat Builders, a group of construction workers using anything and everything as their percussion instruments, and they always put on a great show. It's now time to move on to the newest section in the park, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley. Before you enter the land, you can catch the Hogwarts Express that will take you directly to Hogsmeade over in Universal Orlando's other park, Islands of Adventure. 
Designed to look like London's King's Cross Station, you will enter platform 9 and 3 quarters as you become part of the story. You will encounter characters from the popular Harry Potter series, including Hagrid, Dementors, and of course, Ron, Hermione, and Harry, before seeing the beautiful Hogwarts and arriving in Hogsmeade. It is the perfect way to travel between the two parks, but you will need a two-park ticket to ride this attraction. As you walk along a regular London street, you will notice the triple decker night bus before finding the hidden entrance that will take you straight into Diagon Alley. It features an amazing selection of shops, restaurants and attractions. Within this amazing immersive land, there are a few exciting stage shows, including a puppet show, enacting stories from the tales of Beetle the Bard and a live musical performance by Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. Both of these performances help to bring the area to life and are great additions to the land. The flagship attraction in Diagon Alley is Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. This is a 3D motion-based steel roller coaster dark ride that is based around the wizarding bank Gringotts. You enter the bank surrounded by amazing audio animatronic goblins that interact with the guests before joining Harry Potter and the gang as you head down into the vaults and search for one of Voldemort's horcruxes. You'll meet many different characters as well as some magical creatures seen throughout the ride. This is a great attraction with many exciting elements and is a must for any fan of the Harry Potter franchise. You can also head into the Gringotts Money Exchange to trade your dollars into Gringotts banknotes, which can be used in Diagon Alley, Hogsmeade and other select areas of the Universal Orlando Resort. Overall, Diagon Alley is a great addition to the park and as the most popular area, we would suggest arriving early to keep those wait times down. We now move on to what used to be one of the largest areas of the park, but is now the smallest. World Expo only houses one attraction, Men in Black Alien Attack. This is an interactive shooting dark ride which begins as a training exercise before an announcement of an alien prison ship crash landing in New York where you are instantly sent to battle the many different audio animatronic aliens before they cause too much damage. This is a great attraction for you to battle for the highest score against your family and friends to become the best recruit. Carrying on around the lagoon, you will next come to Springfield, the home of the Simpsons. You can have a beer in Moe's Tavern, grab some food in Krusty Burger, and see a host of characters throughout this amazing land. The main attraction is the Simpsons Ride, a huge simulator ride that replaced the Back to the Future attraction in 2008. On the ride, you will be introduced to a cartoon theme park called Krusty Land. However, Sideshow Bob is loose from prison and seeks revenge on Krusty and the Simpson family by taking over the park and destroying the ride. On this adventure, you will recognize plenty of popular Simpsons characters as you try to escape from Sideshow Bob's demolition attempts. The ride utilizes the huge IMAX screens and ride cars from the previous attraction. Near the entrance of the ride, Krusty Land Carnival Games gives you the chance to win a Simpsons themed prize at the various Midway stations. In 2013, Springfield was expanded, which included a new aerial carousel attraction called Kang and Kudos Twirl and Hurl. This is based on the aliens that feature in the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes. You will ride a UFO and spin past many interactive characters as you join the aliens in destroying Springfield. By the time you're watching this video, the next section of the park will most likely be closed. Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone will be closing on January 15th, 2023. This includes Fievel's Playland, Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster, the Water Play Area, Curious George Goes to Town, DreamWorks Destination, and Shrek and Donkey's Meet and Greet. Some of these attractions have been in the park for over 20 years, so the area is in much need of a change. Stick around until the end of the video to find out what we think might be replacing Kidzone in the near future. You may have noticed that there are still a couple of attractions in the Kidzone area that won't be closing. First up is the stage show, Animal Actors on Location. This is a 20 minute live show featuring trained animals from movies and TV shows performing various tricks and showcasing their talents. 
And finally, there is the classic dark ride, E.T. Adventure. This attraction was created by Universal along with the movie's director, Steven Spielberg, who you can see before entering the indoor queue line giving information about the ride. As you enter inside, you will be transported to a heavily forested area reminiscent of the film, with many props and easter eggs lying around. You'll then sit on a bicycle themed ride vehicle as you are tasked to return E.T. to his home planet. You'll perform the classic scene as you fly over the police car before going to the green planet and seeing all of E.T.'s family and friends before returning home. This is a quintessential Universal attraction and I hope it remains in the park for years to come. We now come to the final area in the park, Hollywood, starting with Universal's Horror Makeup Show, a live stage show themed as a behind the scenes presentation of special effects used in horror films. A pre-show allows guests to walk through and view set pieces and props from various films such as the Universal Classic Monster series. This show has some audience participation and can be very funny as the hosts demonstrate how different effects are used in the movies. This show is very easy to miss, but I highly recommend you check it out. You can also see a host of other classic characters in Hollywood throughout the day. Look out for Betty Boop, Doc Brown, Scooby-Doo and the gang, as well as some of the characters from Universal's Superstar Parade. The final attraction in Hollywood is the Bourne Stuntacular, a live-action stunt stage show based on the Jason Bourne film series. This uses a mixture of moving set pieces and screens to travel across three continents and includes chase scenes, fist fights, and a bunch of parkour. If you're a fan of the Bourne series or stunts in general, you'll be impressed by the performers and the state-of-the-art technology used throughout the show. The show opened in 2020 and of course replaced the amazing Terminator 2 3D, but I think is a worthy replacement. Universal Orlando's cinematic celebration is the nighttime lacoon show in Universal's Central Park. The show features 40-foot panoramic water curtains used as projection screens, fireworks, projection mapping onto surrounding buildings, and over 120 water fountains. Some of the scenes depicted include footage from films such as Jurassic World, The Fast and Furious, and Harry Potter. This is a great show and the perfect way to wrap your day up at Universal Studios Florida. Before we take a look at what's coming to the park, if you haven't already booked your next Universal trip, then why not check out Undercover Tourist for some great deals on Universal and Walt Disney World hotels and tickets. Take a look at my affiliate link in the description box below to see how much you could save on your next Orlando vacation. Obviously, with the new third park epic universe currently under construction and with its ambitious deadline for 2025, you might be mistaken that Universal Studios Florida will have nothing new to offer over the next few years. This couldn't be further from the truth as a few projects are already underway. First up, we have the replacement of Shrek 4D in Production Central. This will be replaced by Illumination's Villain Con Minion Blast. This ride will be a very unique attraction that will allow visitors to grab an interactive blaster and take part in the villain competition. Instead of a ride car, you will be on a movable walkway system that will take you through a variety of different scenes. Along with this attraction, Monsters Cafe will be rethemed into Minions Cafe, similar to the location in Universal Studios Hollywood. And the whole of Production Central will be transformed into the new Minions Land on Illuminations Avenue. With an opening date of summer 2023, it won't be too long before visitors will be enjoying this whole new land. Also, as I mentioned earlier, Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone will be closing on January 15, 2023, and nothing concrete has been announced about its replacement. But if I had to hazard a guess, I would presume they will keep the area kid-friendly, and as Illumination's Minion Land is already in development, it will most likely be based around a DreamWorks animation IP. It could be a Shrek-themed land similar to Universal Studios Singapore, or a Kung Fu Panda land like in Beijing. It might be based on a more recent franchise like Madagascar or Trolls, but most likely it will probably feature a mixture of different properties. We can't wait to see what Universal Creative come up with, and hopefully it won't be too long until we find out more about this exciting project. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to help support the channel, then consider subscribing. Or check out my new Patreon page for early access to videos starting from just $2 a month. 
I have also just released some new merch which you can take a look at in the link below. And if you want to see a guide for the water park in the Universal Orlando Resort, Volcano Bay, then check out this video here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.